Hi guys, Ollie here. I'm a final year medical student at the University of Warwick and welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. Now, as you may or may not be aware, my final exams are coming up very soon. They're in just under two months, which is pretty, pretty terrifying. But I don't want to leave you guys hanging. So what I decided I would do is just post semi-regular kind of question polls and you guys have sent in loads already just so I can make a couple of quick videos a week answering one or two of your questions a little bit more directly because that means I can still try and be helpful to you guys in the meantime, while in the meantime I can have my head in the books prepping for finals. And the first of these questions that I'm going to tackle today is, is med school hard? And this is something that I've spoken about before a little bit on the channel, but let, let's just approach the topic directly. Is med school hard as a degree? You know, medics, medical students whinge all the time about how difficult the course is, are they just playing it up? Is it actually hard? Obviously med school is hard. However, it's maybe not hard in exactly the way that you think it is. And just bearing in mind, my perspective was I came to medical school, so I came to Warwick in 2017, having already done a first degree. In 2014, I went to study cellular and molecular biology at Newcastle University, and then from there immediately moved to Warwick to do a four year medical program. What that means is that I have the experience of going through a first university level degree and that was a science degree obviously your experience will vary if you perhaps came from classics or music or something a bit more arty humanities and then went to medical school but as someone who did a science degree first this is my perspective is medical school as academically hard as perhaps another undergraduate degree i'm actually going to say no i don't think it is i do not think the difficulty of the content as such, or at least the depth at which you go into particular topics. So if you're doing something biomed -y, biosciency like I did, you're going into all these different cytokine and interleukin pathways and molecular mechanisms and complicated genetics. And medical school, at least in my experience, has not been anywhere near like as conceptually challenging. There are some things that are harder than others, you know, learning the different spinal tract pathways or how certain elements of immunology work is more challenging, at least for me, than learning some anatomy. Because a lot of stuff in medical school is just things that you have to remember with no kind of logical underpinning. They're just lists of things that you need to keep in your mind. I would actually genuinely argue that if you can cope with A-level biology, that's probably about as hard as it gets. What does make med school hard, and the reason why med school is hard, and again, I would probably agree, is harder or at least more draining and demanding than a, than a regular undergraduate degree, is firstly, it's simply the incredible breadth of things that you have to understand, and do not take that lightly. Because unlike a normal science degree where you will go in and, and really dive deep on one particular topic, which might be like the embryology of the spine, or going in very, very close detail on the Krebs cycle and all the different processes that feed into it, medical school is knowing a little bit about a lot, but it's a whole lot. Because it's not good enough simply to know your just your cardiology or your renal physiology or your neurology. You also have to know your musculoskeletal anatomy. You have to know all your pharmacology, all of your underlying embryology. You have to remember it all at once. And that is the thing that makes the curriculum challenging. Unlike most undergraduate degrees, which are modular, and my undergraduate degree was very much like this, you would spend, you know, six to eight weeks studying something, you would have an exam at the end of that module, and you would move on, you would get your credits and you would forget it all, and then you would move on to the next module, and you'd probably have two or three modules on the go at once. At least my experience in medical school, where we simply have, at the end of each year, a summative assessment which covers everything, that means that you cannot afford to simply be good at one module, forget it and move on. You have to maintain a sort of minimal level of competence across all domains in medicine. And this only gets more and more difficult as you get through the years, because again, once you've passed the first year and maybe done some anatomy training, you can't forget that anatomy because it's still relevant when you move on to the next year, as is your embryology, as is your pharmacology. And medical schools operate according to a spiral curriculum most of the time, which means that the same core concepts are revisited over and over and over again. At least at Warwick, the core structure is more or less, the first year is more about 
the normal anatomy and physiology of the human body, learning about how all the different systems work and interplay with each other and where all the different drugs work. So we're about halfway through the video now, guys. I've just got to do a cheeky beg once again. I am once again asking for your support. Only about 10% of you that watch these videos are subscribed to the channel. And that is the single biggest measure that helps me justify what I'm doing to my seniors and helps me keep the channel free. Thank you so much. I would really appreciate it. Let's carry on. Then when you get into phase two, you're on clinical placement a lot more of the time. You're now thinking more about investigation and diagnosis. You know, someone comes into my clinic and they've got chest pain or they've got neck pain or their tummy doesn't feel right. What tests and investigations can I now order based on my knowledge of not just the normal anatomy and physiology, but how those things can be deranged? How am I going to work out exactly how they are deranged and come to some diagnosis? That's kind of phase two. And then the final phase, phase three, which is the one I'm coming to the end of very rapidly, is not just with the knowledge of normal physiology, normal anatomy, how they can be deranged and how I might investigate them. But once I know actually what diagnosis they have, how am I going to help them? What drugs can I give them? What surgery do they need? What advice or safety netting do they need to make sure that this doesn't progress into something worse? Hopefully you can see what I mean, where you actually need to continuously build on this core set of knowledge and you can't forget any of it. So conceptually, is medical school particularly challenging? No, I would argue that it's actually not. It's actually simpler, I would argue, because you are simply scratching the surface in most of the topics that you look at, whereas most other degrees are specialist in that area and they will know more about it. You know, the average biomedical scientist will know far more about the Krebs cycle than I do as a medic, for example. I think the easiest way to think about it is that medics are generalists by training. They are trained to know a little bit about a lot, but enough to make sure that people don't suffer. And they can then obviously redirect to the specialists that are in charge of care. And then you start to think about specialty doctors and consultants who are obviously not generalists. They are then the specialists who will have that much deeper level of understanding in that specific area. But as far as medical school and general medical training goes, no, academically it's not that hard. But what makes it hard is the amount of studying and the time that you have to spend embedding all of these concepts and constantly revisiting them. That's my view. And then the only other element I would like to add is that medical school can actually become harder for, I think, other reasons. And these are other demands on your time. Because let's say you're quite career focused like I am, like I like to have a plan, at least maybe thinking about what the next few years are likely to be. And I want to do something quite competitive, right? Let's say surgery. I don't really just need to be focusing on the now and getting through medical school. I also, in practical terms, need to be thinking about the next say five years and that means doing things like research projects, getting involved in national committees, doing some teaching, building my leadership skills because eventually in the not too distant future I'm going to have an interview which determines whether or not I get into the specialty or into the career path that I want to and actually in practical terms these things are often so competitive that you would want to start preparing during medical school. So right now I'm not just preparing for finals, I'm writing up a couple of papers, I'm helping out a senior with a systematic review, I'm helping out a future supervisor with a very large scale project that they're running and this is all with the goal of hitting my own future goals and all of this has to happen on top of the burdens that I already have. And this is the other element that I think can make medical school quite challenging and that's not, that's not going to be correct for everyone. The vast, vast majority of people end up doing exactly what they want to do. They get into their specialty of choice, but you have to grind to get there. And I think that's that's the other element. Medical school, and I, I gather medical education in the long run is a grind. There is always another project. There is always another exam. And it's not really one of those degrees. It's not really one of those careers where you can just kind of sit on your laurels. You maybe can once you're a consultant, but then your job is so hard that that's the thing that you should be focusing on. So there we go, guys. I hope that answers the question. That was a little bit of a ramble, but that's covered the main talking points that I wish to cover. I hope that was helpful. Please, if you have more questions that you would like me to address in this series, please let me know. It would be a gigantic help because it'll help me continue to help you 
while I'm a bit more busy and prepping for my final exams. So thank you so much for watching guys, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out ollieburton.com to check out my full course on getting into medical school and more hints and tips besides. Take care and I'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed this video guys, there are three ways that you can help and support the channel. The first is by liking, commenting and subscribing. The second is you can buy me a coffee using my Ko-Fi link and help keep me awake during the editing process. My eye bags are Gucci. The third is you can use my referral link in the description below to save yourself 10% of Complete Anatomy 2021, my favourite anatomy learning tool. Take care and I will see you next time.